Yo, what's going on Epic 7? I'm Sue and this is my beginner's guide to Abyss Floor 119. Floor 119 will have you facing off against Kawerk and this floor, it's going to be either really easy depending on what characters you have available in your roster or nightmarishly difficult that may require you to build or unlock characters that normally you wouldn't want to have to do. So brace yourselves, the mechanics section of this video and the team section is going to be quite long. If you just want to see the fight, as always, check the timestamps down below. Let's get it started by talking about floor one, get the easiest part out of the way first, and that is Nightmare Keeper here. Nightmare Keeper, as well as Kawerk, take no damage from max HP percentage artifacts or guardians. So Arky does not work here. Daydream Joker as an artifact does not work here. Nightmare Keeper also has this passive here, Spell Absorb. Any damage that it or the adds on the first floor take from warriors is massively reduced. Whenever a warrior attacks it or its allies, they will dispel all debuffs from them and get a massive damage boost. And they naturally just do an insane amount of damage to warriors. After like an hour and change of grinding, I literally could not get a warrior to survive the first floor. Just don't try it. Don't play warriors on Abyss 119. It's just not worth it. No Terranor Guard, uh, no Commander Lorena, right? Like there's definitely ways you could do it. If you're willing to play like some very cheesy compositions like Shuri, uh, lots, things like that. But that's beyond the scope of this series. So again, just take my word for it. Don't play Warriors on this floor. Now let's go back and talk about Kawerk. The core mechanic of the fight is this move here, Dimensional Explosion, which he will use at the start of the fight, as well as every four turns. It is an AoE attack that defense breaks and slows your entire team. And also does bonus damage based on how many souls you have. If you ever have over 20 or more souls, this move can be run ending, right? As you can see at 40 or more souls, it penetrates 70% of everyone's defense. You basically just outright die. So yeah, you need to keep your souls low constantly throughout the fight because this move is going to get used a hell of a lot, right? Now, whenever he uses dimensional explosion, whether that's at the start of the fight, every four turns, or he also activates it at the 40 and 70 HP breakpoints, he will spawn three adds. If he uses Dimensional Explosion at the start of the fight or every four turns, the three adds that he spawns will be these, Wandering Punisher. Now, the Wandering Punishers, what they do is they have a guaranteed dual attack with Kuwer that steals the buffs from whatever character is getting attacked and puts them onto Kuwer and gives Kuwer a combat readiness push. So if you don't kill the Punishers, what ends up happening is they just take a ton of extra turns for Kuwer He's good at Dimensional Explosion more often. Explosion gets stronger throughout the fight. So obviously, you want these things dead. Because if not, Kuwerik's just going to be turn cycling like a mofo. But if you kill a Punisher, then the remaining Punishers will AoE attack counter your entire team with a move that also blinds everybody. And that's kind of trash. Because if you kill one, you get hit with two AoE attacks. And later on in the fight, if Kuwerik goes Dimensional Explosion, defense breaks your whole team and then you kill one of the Punishers and the other two survive, then they will AoE counter and probably wipe your entire team. So using single target DPS to get rid of the Punishers is just not advisable. So you need to use an AoE damage dealer in order to get rid of these things, so that, that way Kuwerk just doesn't turn cycle like crazy. The problem is that for a free-to-play player, right, for essentially characters that everyone has access to, there's only one good option, which is the one we're going to talk about in this video. I tried Mercedes for three and a half hours. And because of the fact that she has a four turn cooldown on S3 and like a three on S2, you eventually come to the part where you have to use Divine Bolt, her S1. That thing does not do uniform AoE damage. One of the Punishers will always end up lower than the others. You will incur those counters. It sucks, right? There's nothing we could do about that. So yeah, make sure you are bringing a uniform AoE damager. We'll talk about our options in just a moment. Now, when he uses Dimensional Explosion here, Kawerk, when he's under 40 or 70% health, it will spawn three undead liches on the enemy team, right? Now, these liches, there's three of them, they spawn with a three-turn countdown above each of their heads. If it goes to zero, game over, man. So you have to get rid of them. Problem is, the only way to deal damage to them is with Soul Weavers. They take no damage from anything other than Soul Weavers. A basic attack from a Soul Weaver will do 20% of the maximum HP of one Lich. 
If you use a non-attack skill from a Soul Weaver, though, it does 20% of all of the Lich's maximum HP to them. So ideally, you would like to sequence five non-attack skill sequences in a row against these Liches to do 100% of their max HP. That is the goal, the easiest way to get past the mechanic. To make things difficult, though, the Liches have moves that injure everyone on your team and CR push back the team. So if you only have one Soul Weaver, uh, based on their cooldowns, it might not be feasible for you to actually kill all three Liches in a timely fashion before things just kind of go off the rails and you lose the game. So for that reason, you gotta play two Soul Weavers, which already sucks because we already talked about how you're gonna need one AoE uniform damage dealer. So you're not gonna be having a ton of great damage coming out of your team already. So you might be inclined well to play like Tamarin as your frontliner and then just use a regular old damage dealer to help supplement the lack of DPS, right? No, that's not going to work either because when it Kawerk spawns the second group of Liches, he will inflict the person on your team with the highest amount of max HP with Curse Stigma. Curse Stigma says that the person who has it has their healing reduced by half, has their effect resistance reduced by 200%, and... The only way to actually get rid of Curse Stigma will be for that character to die or to use a non-attack skill to randomly pass it to another ally. The thing is, under 40%, Kawerik focuses the person with Curse Stigma. They will be just bum-rushed by Kawerik and all of his adds. So, if it ends up on your primary damage dealer and not your tank, they're probably going to end up dying. So, to recap why this floor sucks. Can't play Warriors. Need an AoE damage dealer to deal with Punishers. Need a tank in order to survive through the Stigma phase at low health. Need two Soul Weavers to deal with the Liches. And also, you need consistent and easy 10 Soul Soul Burns in order to keep your souls low throughout the fight. Got it? Cool. Let's talk about who we're playing first, starting with the Knight, the tank that we're playing, as well as two Soul Weavers. Then we will talk about the primary damage dealer, which is a very difficult conversation to have. So... For our knight here, it's going to be Adventurer Raz, and that is because Command Strike not only increases the damage that our team deals, but it is easily the best way to dump souls in all of Abyss and keep our souls under 20% for Dimensional Explosion. As for how we have Raz built, Arius here is going to be our artifact of choice, health percentage necklace, health percentage ring, boots are speed, and effect is at over 85% plus. If you don't want to play Raz, Brig is an option. But I have found that when you're under 40% health because his soul dump is tied to his barrier, you could end up donating that barrier to Kawerik or he could be hit with unbuffable and you get no value. So your mileage may vary. You can use Brig if you want, but I think that he is a lot worse than Raz, especially also because Brig could accidentally pass off Stigma to your primary damage dealer and get them killed based on turn order. So for me, I just stick with Raz and I suffer through the Stigma. Now, let's talk about our primary healer, which is, of course, Tamarin, best healer in all of Abyss. Tamarin is so incredible for this floor. So, at the start of the Lich phase, activating Shining Star, that's going to be 20% to all Liches. Then she gets extra turn. You get to CR push with Song of the Forest. That is another 20% damage to all the Liches. And remember, your basic attack skill also does 20% damage to one Lich. Unless you're in idle mode, in which case Serene Tune is AoE, and therefore is going to do 20% damage to all the Liches. So Tamron's idle mode does guaranteed 60% to all the Liches. That's amazing. As for how we ever built, Wondrous Potion Vial here as the artifact, health percentage on the necklace and the ring, boots or speed, effectiveness at over 85% while not required, will make your life a lot easier, because that means idle mode Tamron can strip things like barriers, uh, immunity, defense buff, attack buff, whatever he steals from your entire team. Now, as for our second Soul Weaver, you can play whatever you want. I've tried Inos 2.0. I'm sure you, if you have like Ruel or Destina, uh, Dien, Amelia, right? Any Soul Weaver is probably good here as long as it has good turn cycling. But for us free-to-play players, Montmorency is going to be the best option. And that is because Earnest Prayer here gives her a ton of combat readiness and is on a relatively short turn cooldown. And Purification is also on a one to two turn cooldown based on the skill tree and how you have it leveled up. So it's very easy for you on Ma uh, Magaraha's Tome here for you to just go S3, 20% to all the Liches. Oh, look, it's Montmorency's turn immediately again. S2, that is another 20% to all the Liches. So you could very easily see the sequence of 
Hammer and Idle modes, 20%. Hammer and CR pushes, 20%. Montmorin CS3, 20%. Montmorin CS2, 20%. Then it's Tamron's turn. S1, kill all the liches. Boom, done, easy, free. That's why we're going with Montmorency. Magtome is the artifact, health percentage on the necklace, ER or health percentage on the ring, and then boots are speed. Now, the most difficult conversation to have is who is your AoE damage dealer? And for us free to plays out there, it's Yuna. Yuna is pretty much your only real option here. You could play Mercedes, but I played Mercedes with 4,100 attack, 350 crit damage with a permanent greater attack buff from Mascot Hazel and a mono fire team. And I still could not kill Kawerk in three and a half hours. So I don't think this is the way, whereas Yuna is significantly more consistent. I have like almost like a 75% clear rate with her. If you don't want to play Yuna, the other characters that you could play are Seaside Bologna, if you have her. She's by far the best character for this floor. Lone Cressa Bologna, which is a Moonlight 5-star. Navy Captain Landy on counter set with Elbrus Ritual Sword. Or Abyssal Euphine on counter set with Elbrus Ritual Sword. All of those characters are Moonlight 5s, and they are also uh, <laughs> limited characters. You could technically, I guess, also play Spectre Tanabria, but that is another Moonlight 5-star, and not everyone has access to her. Uh, and she's also not uniform, so that's going to be kind of inconsistent. So yeah, the only non-limited, non-ML character that I can honestly recommend for this floor is Yuna, who is freely available from the game's connections, right? Again, we already talked about Mercedes ain't cutting it. Vivian's a green unit into red characters. That's not cutting it either. So my advice, if you don't have the limiteds or MLs that I talked about, is to just unlock Yuna from the game's connections and throw her into Grace of Growth and don't spend any Malagora on her like I did because I am a guide maker and therefore I can afford it. Anyways, as for how we have her actually built, any artifact that gives bonus damage will work here or the four-star artifact Rosa Hargana for the extra dual attack chance. Any of these will work. Just pick something that gives damage. You will be fine. Just don't pick Daydream Joker. Exclusive equipment. I have bonus combat readiness on the S1 for the entire team. Although bonus damage on S3 also works on media counting. Just don't take the second exclusive equipment. You will be fine. As for how she is built, critical hit damage on the necklace, attack percentage on the ring, and boots are speed. Anyways, now that you understand who we're playing, why we're playing, and why this floor kind of sucks for free-to-play players, let's jump in and see how an actual run works, shall we? All right. So at the start here, we want to skill one with Tamarin. And then we could get our buffs here, our attack buff and speed buff to the whole team with Yuna. Basic attack here to deal damage to everybody and also CR push the team. S3 and Montmorency in order to get souls for Roz. Kill three for the souls. Kill two for the cycling. Alright, S1 here with Yuna. And then we could go S1 here. Um, doesn't really matter. S1 of the boss. Soulworm with Roz. Meteor Cannon for the damage and the souls. Uh, we could skill two here. Soul burn here. Skill three here for the souls. Buffs up with Yuna. Extra turn. Skill one. Skill two for the turn cycling. Kill one here. Should we get started? Full burn with Ross. Okay. Meteor cannon again for the souls and the damage. Skill 
skill warlock mama. We can idle mode here. Listen. Do my Listen to me. See our push up. Burn. Basic. Uh, S3 for the souls. Kill two here, just for the cycling. Off tome. Basic. Soul burn again. Should kill that one ad with the AoE from Yuna. Buffs up. And it again. All right, basic here. The R push. Soul burn on Roz. All right, silence. Get S two here. S one with Tama. S3 for the souls. Yep, just keep the basic train rolling. Storm room with Roz. S2 with Tama, just to top everybody off. Turn cycling again. Alright, so we could go bus with Yuna. Just to get the extra turn of more souls and cannon. And then soul burn here with Roz. Uh, we could try to sleep this Av. Or kill it. Basic here. We're at the point where we want to save our, our idle mode for the start of the next floor. Uh, we can skill three here, just for the souls. Protect us a little bit from this AoE that we're about to get hit with. Skill two. Skill one. Skill one here. Burn again with Roz, because again, I would just like to start the next floor with like next to no souls, so I don't have to worry about Kawarik's mechanic. Skill three. Keep our souls high enough to at least soul burn Roz. Uh, we could go boss here. And then cannon. Yeah, unfortunately, Yuna doesn't do the most amount of damage, but she's just the most consistent thing that we can be playing on this floor. Basic attack. Full burn, and hopefully we get a defense break to wrap this up and go to the next floor. Back here. And there we go. And we are on to Kawarik. Alright, we want to idle mode at the start. Alright, and now let me look at my cooldowns. Okay, I wanted to see our push. We could burn here, hopefully we get a defense break. You want to make sure you're always targeted Kawarik with everything in case you get a dual attack on like Yuna. Right? So we could go... Hmm. Let's go S3 for the souls. Guarantee that Roz has enough. Uh, basic attack here. Back Kawarik. Let's get a steel boss from Roz. Alright, so we go basic here. Alright, we soul burn here, even though he has immunity. We want that CR push and damage coming out from Yuna. 
Kill two here. All right, let's go. Let's go skill three here. Because we're going to get a bunch of CR off of Tamarin's idle mode push. So that's going to let us go buff up and then S1 to pick up the rest of the kills. All right, so we see our push back up. All right, skill three for the souls. All right, soul burn again with Roz. Buff up. Go here. Basic attack, Kawar. All right, stealing boss off Raz again. We can skill two for the healing. All right. I actually don't want to S3 here or Soul Rain because I need to make sure these die uniformly. So I'm just going to basic attack skill here on Kawarik. And now we have this here with boss up and that should easily get rid of all three of them at the same time. Now I don't have to deal with any AOE counters. Could heal up here. And now I could S3 here, but I want to save that for the liches at 70%. So instead, I'm just going to S2. And so pretty much at this point, we are just on the soul burning Roz and Unitrain and saving the cooldowns for our weavers. All right, so we go basic here. Basic here. And go here. For the buffs. Well, S3 because it does more damage. We're just trying to push him to 70% right now. Soul burn here. Remember, I have to stay under 20 souls. We can basic attack here. Right, we can S2 here. And then we could S1 here, and that will push him to the Lich phase. Alright, so we S3 at Roz because he has no other play. Because remember, he's not going to deal any damage here. Now we idle mode. There you go. There's 20% to all of them. CR push. 20% to all of them. Kill 3 on Montmorency. 20% to all of them. S1 to CR push with Yuna. Uh, we could just S1 a Lich, doesn't matter. Skill 2. 20% to all of them. AoE basic attack. 20% to all of them. And there you go. All down. Now you can proceed to go back to your offense. So let's go buff up. Cannon. I'm actually going to basic attack because I don't want her to come back around here in case Roz doesn't cut here. Because we're very close to having 20 souls and he's about to ult. Okay, we're back down. Nice. See our push up with Tamarin. Skill one here. And then we can go skill three for the souls. Defense break here. Don't get it. Basic attack here. Basic here. Basic here. Soul burn. Hopefully we get a defense break. No. Nope. And we are just not that lucky. Uh, keep going for him, I guess. Get our buffs up. Like, he's got speed buff, I want to match his tempo. Let's go for cannon now, even though we already had cannon. I 
All right, we skill two for the cycling. Oh, you know, got hit for big damage. That kind of sucks. All right, we still burn here. Uh, let's go skill three on Yuna. We need to heal her up. Skill two here. Remember, I have to save our idol mode. Let's go. This is a tough, tough call here because, like, clearly number four is ahead of the other two. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go for a defense buff here to do some minor AoE chip damage. And then pray that maybe this doesn't kill outright. All right, killed two. So we have to eat one of the counters, unfortunately. Not the end of the world, but it still sucks. We attack here. Go here. All right, let's go for a defense break. Let's see if we can push to the Lich phase. Let's go buffs up. Cannon and pray that this pushes to 40%. It isn't over yet. Them. Ooh, very close. Nice duel. Hopefully this pushes. Nope, doesn't push. Alright. Same thing as before. We could soul burn here. That'll end up pushing him to discharge. All right, so we'll go S1 for the CR push. We'll go S3 on Tamarind. That'll be 20%. And then we could idle mode, that's 20. CR push, so now we're up to 60%. S2, we're up to 80%. CR push with Yuna's S1. Um, We could just basic attack Kawarik to try to strip one of his buffs. And then we can basic attack here. Doesn't really matter what, it'll kill everything. Alright, now comes the hard part. We have to rush, we have to rush Kawarik as fast as we can. Because now he's going to start hurting a lot. And he also has access to the fact that uh, he can push back our cooldowns at this point. So this is a very critical damage window. We really need a defense break here. Didn't get it, sadly. Alright, we will... let's see. Let's skill three Raz here. Remember, he takes almost no healing back, so we want to try to keep him topped off whenever possible. Go one. Heal it with Motmo. Soulburn here. Yuna. Back here. Alright, go here with Yuna again. The CR push on Yuna's S1 is being very beneficial here to this run. S1 here. Alright, so he... Ooh, lucky for us, Raz resisted here, so he didn't steal our boss. That's very nice. So we go S2 here. Makes up for all those missed defense breaks from earlier. Ooh, buff stolen there. We want to S2 heal up. All right, let's get our buffs up. Let's go cannon. All right, let's go S3 on Raz. Remember, he has massively reduced healing, so anytime we could take the chance to top him off, we should. All right, we're going to go defense buff on Raz because obviously Yuna is slept. That's kind of bad for us, or I should say stunned. 
Bad RNG. Alright, let's idle mode. Remember, dimensional explosion is about to go off. We have to spend our souls. Alright, so let's go spend here. S2. Colburn here. Oof. Have to eat those double counters again. That's not good. Especially because he's about to ult again. Alright. Go here again. Alright, we need to heal up Yuna here. Man, that's a lot of damage. Alright, Soul Burn here. Man, just bad luck all around with our defense breaks today. S2 here. Let's get our buffs, because we have to, again, we have to speed up. You can see he's starting to do like 60% of Yuna's max health every time she gets hit. All it takes is just one random dual attack that's like unlucky and we lose. So we have to kind of pick up the pace. See our push up. Basic attack here. No dual attack. Soulburn, please give us a defense break. Ooh, we got one. Nice. Go again. Oh, we're almost there. Ooh, we stole all of our buffs. Alright, hopefully this is the kill shot. And there we go. Abyss 119 in a nutshell. Yeah, this floor, really, really difficult if you don't have specific limiteds or ML5s. Again, Yuna is the most consistent way I have found to beat it with free-to-play only options. Because again... All consistent AoE attacks and has that built-in CR push to her S1, which is super, super nice. That said, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them down below. And this is one of those floors where I'm begging you, if you came up with an alternative solution to the ones, the ones that I'm presenting here, whether that's with like Landy, uh, Seaside Bologna, Lone Crescent Bologna, right? Or even Yuna here. If you come up with something else, please post it down in the comment section below. This one was an absolute headache, right? I just came off of being sick, so I'm a little bit congested as I'm recording this video. And yeah, I really struggled to come up with a better solution this, than this one. But unfortunately, this is the best one that I could come up with. If you have a better one, please let us know down in the comments below. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll see you all in the final Abyss Floor, which is Abyss 120 next time. Later now.